On this week's Top 10 Most Anticipated Comic Books, guys, there's so many books that are coming out, they all couldn't be in the Top 10. So which ones made the cut? You'll find out. Hey, all my webheads out there, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, I am your host, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to bring you the top 10 most anticipated comic books. Guys, this is for October 21st, 2020. That's right, fans, it's never too early to start that pull list for next week. And hopefully, this helps you make decisions on what comic books to buy and webheads. Guys, in any time, if you want to become a member of Comic Book Corner 2.0, all you got to do is hit that join button right there on my home screen as it gives that extra love, extra support towards the channel. And as always, I appreciate all of you guys for watching and supporting my channel. So let's get started with this list, everybody, because this is a big one. So instead of bringing you a hot seat, I'm going to bring you the hot comic books that are getting released this particular week that were on the outside of my top 10, but maybe in any other week, they would have been in my top 10 most anticipated. So the first one, we're going to be talking about from Boom Studios. This is Dune. This is issue one. Now, obviously, we all seen the trailer to the Dune movie, uh, and now we're getting a release of this comic book. So, if you are a fan of Dune and you're excited about the movie and you want to you know, jump on board with this one, go ahead, check it out. That's issue one. Next, another really good book by Aftershock. This is Dead Day. That's right, guys. I currently read this book myself. This is issue four. Awesome story about people rising from the dead and going back to their families that uh, they were connected to at one point. And this plot has definitely taken a turn. Really great story. I definitely recommend it if you're looking for a different type of zombie genre. All right, the next book is Big Girls Issue 3 by Jason Howard. Uh, this is another interesting book as we get to see men who some of them get this weird disease that become these crazy creatures. And some of the females get this disease as well. And they wind up doing battle against these creatures. It's like this organization. But it looks like there's going to be this rebellion that's happening. Really interesting artwork. Interesting premise to his story. Definitely recommend this one. This one is done by Image Studios. Next, we have Maestro Issue 3. I am really enjoying this story. Uh, issues one and two were really well done by Peter David. Just a different, you know, origin tale on the character if you are interested in something like that. And seeing kind of Banner go down this dark path as he was held against his will as a selected amount of people were, uh, you know, chosen to be part of the future because the earth died in a nuclear war pretty interesting story again if you're a hulk fan if you're a maestro fan if you're a peter david fan check this one out and then next we have juggernaut issue two this is a really awesome story as we get to see juggernaut rescue this girl uh who had these powers and she's not a mutant and she called herself a d cell which was awesome the interactions between those two were fantastic and now it looks like the juggernaut is going to be doing battle against the hulk based off of this cover so it's always pretty cool when you see big huge hulkling like uh creatures going against each other so definitely check out juggernaut if you like that first issue and then last but not least for the hot comics that are coming out this week this one is something is killing the children issue 11 um yeah just outside of that top 10 but it, always a great read the end of the last issue was awesome i don't want to spoil it for you you know you get one of those one of the uh people that or with Erica Slaughter doing battle against a creature and them just trying to, again, stop these creatures. It, it's just a really good horror book. Uh, James Tiny in the fourth is the one that writes it. If you haven't checked it out yet, 
always, I'm always going to suggest this book. Check out, I think there's a trade in in it, in it, and then we have the other five issues. All right, so now, kicking off this top 10, we're going to start it off with a new number one, and this one is a Batman White Knight Harley Quinn issue one done by the Black Label, okay? Now, Remember, um, Sean Murphy is not the writer of this, okay? Uh, but he has done part of the script. So uh, I'm curious to see what this is all going to be about. I want to see the story of Harley Quinn on what she does with Jack Napier's like twins and uh, if she raises them and if they become evil. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen here. Uh, but... I think this could be a good story. This kind of kicks off that whole uh, Batman White Knight universe. So yeah, looking forward to this one. So guys, check it out. All right, next, coming in at number nine, we have... I, I don't know why we're stalling so much on issue 49 and 50 when it comes to the Amazing Spider-Man, but we got the Amazing Spider-Man. This is issue 50.LR, which stands for Last Remains. Um, so I guess we're going to find out what happens in issue 50, why this is kind of continuing, right? Um, so we'll find out this week and once we get that issue 50. Cover is pretty cool as you have the Spider family on there, like you you got Miles Morales and Spider Gwen, and then you have Silk, and yeah, and you have the other Spider Women on there as well. So we'll see what happens with this one. You know, I need to get some kind of closure when it comes to when it comes to Kindred. I need that closure, right? So yeah, looking forward to this one again. I just feel like it's a little bit of a stall, but nevertheless, let's see what happens with it. All right, next, coming in at number eight, we have Death Metal Robin King. So it says, long live the king. Pretty awesome looking cover here. Uh, we were introduced to Robin King a little while back in Death Metal, and a lot of people loved his story in that in that one book that came out and uh and i think people are a fan of this character so now we're going to get a complete one shot of this character so we'll get to know a little bit more about him and maybe his involvement in the um I guess in this multiverse or whatnot, and maybe his story fleshes out a little bit more. Maybe we'll see him in the future after all this death metal stuff is over. So I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Uh, so yeah, really excited about that. So I think this one is $5.99. All right, next, coming in at number seven, we have uh, Nightwing issue 75. Guys, he is back. It's an extra sized anniversary issue. We have no more uh, Rick Grayson. We now have Dick Grayson. He's back in the black and blue. So if you've been waiting all this time for him to make his return, the Joker War is over. He's back. Let's see what happens here. Let's see if this book turns around as it was really bad a few issues back before the Joker War started. So I'm looking forward to it. And Dan Jurgens is the writer. So yes, Nightwing issue 75. All right, next, coming in at number six. Really great story by Jeff Lemire. Hopefully you guys check this one out. This is Family Tree. This is issue nine. Uh, phenomenal read. It's just so interesting to see this story about this little girl, Meg, who turned into a tree. She's the first one of her kind who actually got rooted. Her brother has witnessed this whole thing, and now he's become this uh, next generation of survivors, I guess, trying to protect the earth or maybe even trying to protect these trees. Um, nevertheless, it's a great story definitely very original the artwork is way out there but for some reason every time you read this book you're like wow this is this is awesome it's different you know so again if you haven't checked out uh, family tree go out there read it guys i don't think you'll be disappointed with this one looking forward to seeing where the story goes from here all right closing in on the top five we have Daredevil issue 23. That's right, guys. Sadarsky is tearing it up when it comes to Daredevil. Always a great read. We have Spider Man teaming up with Daredevil at this point in time, and Daredevil is being, uh, 
he he's not on trial yet. It's like he got posted on bail or whatever the case may be, or he's on house arrest. And and until his trial date, he's trying to you know save. Hell's Kitchen, and, and again, he's teaming up with Spider-Man here. We got some uh, crazy things going on with the Kingpin, as usual. He's kind of had an epiphany himself, and yeah, really great read. Definitely, if you haven't read this one, I'll say this every time, because you, the fans, got me to read this book out there. Uh, go out there, read the trades, or if you find those single issues, check it out. Definitely won't disappoint. All right, guys, so coming in at number four, we have Spider-Woman issue five, or if you go to legacy numbering, this is the hundredth issue of the character. Now, you might be kind of thinking, Mike, why is this one so high up on your list? Spider-Woman, right? Um, I actually like this series. The first issue was good. The second issue was eh. The third issue was really good. And then the fourth issue was awesome too because we got to learn about Jessica's new family here, okay? And we never knew about her mother. We never knew about her brother. We never knew she had a niece. And it just looked like in the last issue, she was doing some family bonding and then they got into this battle against some of the enemies. And then the next thing you wind up finding out is her mom throws her out and pushes her in front of some bullets that were going to attack her. And you're just like, what? He's like, come on, man, you just met your mom and now your mom's betraying you. There's something more there, right? So really great story. I like it. Congratulations on getting to that 100th issue. Is it really necessary for a legacy numbering for this? I don't think so. But nevertheless, it's pretty cool. I love the story and it's my number four. All right, so coming in at number three, we have our Exus Sword books. We have two of them this coming week that are coming out on the 21st. We have Excalibur issue 13, Exus Swords chapter 9, and we have X Men issue 13, Exus Swords chapter 10. Okay, so as I, I have recorded this video, I just got done doing my crazy tennis tournament. This video is late being recorded. Uh, it it's, I'm also very behind on reading this particular week's comic books, so I haven't read the previous three issues, but based off of what I read so far, I'm really enjoying it. Based off of some of the reviews, the non-spoiler reviews that I've seen, people have said that this is a really great story, and uh, I think I'm going to enjoy it myself. So right now, as of this point, it is my number three most anticipated, these two books at continuing this story. Uh, again, it is all one story. It just takes place in multiple books. So that's why both of these represent that third spot. So I can't wait to read X's Swords. All right. So then coming in at number two, this is Batman. This is issue 101. All right. This one is like the aftermath of the Joker War. And if you remember correctly, we're getting Grifter, who is making his return back uh, into the Batman comic books or into the DC scene again. So I'm looking forward to that as well. And I just want to see where James Tinian takes the character and the Batman family or the universe uh, from this point forward. So yeah, there's a lot here to see if he's got it in him for the long haul. So that's Batman issue 101, and this is called From the Ashes of the Joker War, A New Day. <laughs> All right, so what's my number one most anticipated comic for October 21st, 2020? Well, guys, it can... It, 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 there's no doubt in my question it was going to be Venom issue 29. I mean... What happened after Venom issue 28? We got all kinds of answers, right? When it came to who Virus was, who Codex was in this world. Obviously, we know who... Um, Eddie Brock's wife is in this world. We know what Eddie did in this world to himself. Uh, we know who the, the Agent Venom soldiers are, which is really badass as well. I mean, 
we were just dropped with bombs all over the place in that last issue. And so this is part four of that story arc. And I just can't wait to see how Eddie thinks of his son going forward. Uh, it, you know, if it, if it happens in the real world or not, I, I don't know. But definitely when it comes to Dylan, uh, even in the Earth 616, he is something more than just Eddie Brock's son, right? He's connected to Noel somehow. There definitely is something there. So I can't wait to read this issue and all the other things going forward with this story overall in general. I think it's going to be awesome. And uh, yeah, that's my most anticipated comic of the week. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this week's most anticipated. I know the format's a little bit different. I didn't have time to uh, do all the normal things that I do with this uh, series, but Nevertheless, it's still here. Next week, it'll get back on track. And uh, hopefully, at least this got the point across on the books that are coming out. And which ones are my top most anticipated? Until next time, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. I'll see you guys real soon. Take care, everyone.